profit. Definition one, a person regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of the Most High. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukak Adash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son in the ancient Hebrew tongue, the one whom you ignorant call Jesus Christ. I also want to give double honor to the head apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who taught me this truth. Much respect to the brothers that are laboring in this work, and also to the believers, to USA Shalom. So yeah, I just want to go into a quick lesson dealing with the, uh, the duty of a prophet, <clears throat> all right, and how to identify if someone is a prophet of the Most High, all right. So that can be simply um, identified according to the will of the Most High, all right, in which you have to understand the will of the Most High in order for you to be a prophet, <laughs> all right, and. Um, this first definition, it says, a person regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of the Most High, as in the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, all right? <clears throat> and Jeremiah, along with Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel were all prophets in captivity in ancient Babylon, all right? They were all prophets in captivity in ancient Babylon. And um, the Lord single-handedly uh, picked these ordinary men and gave them his word all right they would be just ordinary men like me and you today but um <clears throat> the people would never take heed of those prophets because they were perceived to be nobodies but that's who the lord chooses so uh it's the same thing happening in this time and um we have once found ourselves in captivity once again all right, this time in modern day Babylon, which is Babylon the Great, mentioned in Revelations 18, Revelation 17 and 18. All right, mystery Babylon the Great, which is America. And the Lord has done the same thing again, in which He has brought His prophets back through the reincarnation, you know, through the reincarnation to prophesy once again the downfall of this wicked kingdom, as did the prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. All right. And uh, this has always been the sentiment of the Most High and His prophets, and nothing has changed. Okay, so let's go to Revelations 19 and 10. <clears throat> and this is the uh, Revelator, John the Revelator, speaking unto the angel, okay, on the island of Patmos. And he said, And I fell at his feet, at the angel's feet, to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that had a testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship Yahweh Shai for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. You see, it is the spirit of prophecy. And uh, John the Revelator was worshiping an angel, and the angel told him, "Hey, don't don't worship me. Worship the Most High." You know, because whether you know it or not, all right, the Israelites are simply angels trapped in, in the chains of darkness, which are these bodies. All right, so he said, don't worship me. I am your fellow brethren because you are an angel also just trapped in a body. But the testimony of Yahweh Shai would be the spirit of prophecy. So let's click on, let's click on the word prophecy right here, right? And see what we get. Remember the gospel would be a testimony of prophecy, All right? So definition A, <clears throat> a discourse emanating from divine inspiration and declaring the purposes of the most high just like we read in that definition on google whether by reproving and admonishing the wicked all right reproving or admonishing the wicked and the, the natural the natural wicked of the bible is esau the so-called white man in this whole race but our people have taken on the customs of esau all right the wicked and so the prophets today would be sent to admonish and reprove and correct our people from their wicked ways that they have learned throughout these generations. Reading on, <clears throat> it says, or comforting the afflicted, who is the afflicted? The Israelites. Or revealing things hidden, especially by foretelling future events. All right? The prophets were given secrets by the Most High to reveal certain events that were to come to pass. All right? Dealing with future prophecy. And that's why prophecy is, is, is the, like the main ingredient when it comes to um, pushing the Lord's word, you see? 
because when the Lord speaks to his prophets, that means that he's about to uh, uh, put in work. All right? He's about to destroy the kingdom. <clears throat> and it's no different from the day, man. All right. So these last days, the Lord has raised up prophets in Babylon, as the scriptures say, to prophesy against America and all these other countries. You're going to find out in a second. All right? Amos 3 and 6. It says, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord have not done it? Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his servants of prophets. You see? He's always done that. Revealed his secrets unto his servants and prophets. <clears throat> Ordinary men who were given his word and were told by the most how to go out and tell my people to repent, you know, before they be destroyed. And now, um, Just like when you read the book of Ezekiel, right? The Lord spoke to Ezekiel. And look what he told him. Ezekiel 2 and 6. It says, And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks. Though they be a rebellious house. It's talking about the whole nation of Israel, right? Two thirds to be exact. Who, want, who do not want to come back into their heritage and repent from their um, the idol worship. Okay. <clears throat> and it says, um, it says, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed of their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And, th and thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are mostly a rebellious house. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee, be not thou like that rebellious house. All right, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, and hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And that's representative of these uh, this Bible today. All right, that's representative of this Bible today. <clears throat> Verse 10 And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. All right. Lamentations, mourning, and woe. And that's pretty much the message of the gospel of the prophets today. You know, when we speak the true words of Yahweh by Shemel Shah, it's not pleasing on the ears for you people that are still in the world, all right? And that's why it's so hard for you to repent. And, you know, we're talking about our people, the, the Israelites, the so called Negro, Latino, Native Americans. <clears throat> because you want to hear a feel good message, that's what you have heard all your life. In these churches, you, you want to hear about, you know, uh, <laughs> The pastor saying, in 21 days, somebody in here going to win $100 million. <laughs> in 21 days. Some shit like that, you know. And that's just not, that's not the gospel, man. That's not, a, that's not what a true prophet is, 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 is sent for, man. A true prophet is really sent to warn, all right, the Israelites from their wickedness, to turn from their wickedness. Because oftentimes we were delivering into captivity under our enemies. And now we're at the end of that captivity, you know. In um, these modern times, the Lord is calling his people back to repentance, but only a remnant is going to be saved. <clears throat> Ezekiel 3 and 1, moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go and speak unto the house of Israel. You see, and this roll represents his book, man, these words in his book. So I open my mouth, and he calls me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly, which is your mind, to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. This is uh, a similar to. Then did I eat, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go and get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak my words unto them. All right? Speak my words unto them, for thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language put unto the house of Israel. So this message is only going into the house of the Israelites, all right? <clears throat> so-called negro latino native americans not no other nation all right to tell you to repent and we have to speak the words of the heavenly father man that's why when you go to eight isaiah 8 and 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word is because there is no light in them all right so if you got a prophet that's not speaking according to what's written in this book it's because there is no light in them all right and they don't have the truth Okay, so we are we have been given the words of your how about your shot to go out and speak unto you so called Negro Latino Native Americans to tell you to repent. <clears throat> so 
Locke is a damn demon rolling around the, the uh, around the yard, man, causing the ruckus. Anyway, uh, the Lord did the same thing with Jeremiah also, and he was a prophet in Babylon, ancient Babylon, right? Ancient Babylon. So this is what he said, Jeremiah 1. <clears throat> Jeremiah 1 and 8, it says, Be not afraid of the faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. All right, I put my words in my mouth. So that's why I thus said the Lord. When we tell you something, it's always out the scriptures, man, to tell you that, hey, this is what the Lord said, and this is what you should be doing. You see? It goes on to say, verse 10, See, I have set this day, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pour down and to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant and why are the prophets sent with this message all right to prophesy into the kingdoms and these nations <clears throat> to root up and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant all right it's because the lord has a kingdom that is getting ready to be established and before that happens you know he has to root up this current system man he has to root up these nations all right by this word and uh we have to prophesy unto these nations according to what the lord told us to do all right and so all the prophets of the bible came in that same sentiment even yahweh shah the one who you people even call jesus christ he was prophesying against all right the fourth beast which, which was the roman empire and prophesying about the kingdom of the israelites and that's why he was hated so much and that's the same thing that they <clears throat> Jeremiah 28 and 8 The prophets that have been before me And before thee of old Prophesied both against many countries And against great kingdoms Is not America a great kingdom? It says a war and of evil and of pestilence Yeah we telling you that America Is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles As mentioned in the Holy Scriptures This is not our words These are the words of the Heavenly Father Yahweh By Hashem Yahweh Right to warn you people to flee From your idols before the Lord uh, destroys you along with this place, man. All right? This is why the Lord has sent his, pro has sent his prophets out with his secrets to warn you people, you so called Negro, Latino, and Native Americans. <clears throat> All right? So, your current pastor, whoever the hell he may be, you know, whether it's a Christian pastor or you may have an Israelite pastor who, who's telling you that there's going to be peace in his land. Well, verse 9 says otherwise. It says, the prophet which prophesied of peace when the word of the prophet shall have come to pass. As these pastors are telling you right now, oh, it's going to get better. You know, everything's going to go back to normal. Well, let's see. It says, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord had truly sent him. Because the true prophets are telling you that that's going to be evil on the horizon, man. It's going to be nothing but evil. It's going to be mass death. All right, on the on, on the most grand scale that's ever been on the face of the earth, which is called uh, Jacob's trouble, and a lot of people are gonna die. Matter of fact, everyone in America is gonna die from thermonuclear fire. Everyone except the elect. You see, the Lord's about to destroy this whole land. It's gonna be it's, it, in actuality, America is that lake of fire that is mentioned in Revelation. You see, <clears throat> and so we, you know, we read these old, you know. They seem like they may be old, but they were written for this time to be exact, you know. A lot of stuff was written for these times right now. That's why when you go to, um, let's see, they were written for our learning, right? So when you go to Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope, right? Lord, hope, he said, eat this whole roll. And go out and speak unto them, man. This is not just a book that you can read halfway through and understand it. You have to understand the whole story and the mystery of the Israelites, in which they often went into captivity, right? And they were delivered from captivity. And we're at the end of this captivity. And so before that end comes, the Lord always sends out his prophets, you see. And um, like I said, in the midst of World War Three, America will be destroyed by thermonuclear fire. And all the rest of these nations at that as well. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. The thing that hath been. What has been. Ancient Babylon. 
is that which shall be where we are now in modern day Babylon Babylon the Great and that which is done is that which shall be done ancient Babylon was destroyed and this Babylon is going to be destroyed and there is no thing no new thing under the sun if there is there any new thing where it may be say see this is new it had already been of old time which was before us there is no remembrance of former things neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that come after and that's the same thing right now all right you got the same people doing the same thing that they did back in ancient babylon worshiping these false gods going to christian church all right you know getting in the midst of all these idols these ideologies which are against the heavenly father and we telling you people to repent from your idols man and come back into the true power you how about shimmy so that you may be saved all right and uh yeah, that which was then is that which is now, man. You see? There's no new thing under the sun. So, let's get something else real quick. And a lot of prophets were actually prophets in ancient Babylon. <clears throat> let's see, yeah, this is Baruch. Baruch was a prophet in ancient Babylon. And this is Baruch 3 and 8. It says, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from the Lord our power. You see, we are yet this day in our captivities. And Yahweh Bashim al Shai is not gathered as yet, man. That's why when you go to the New Testament, go to uh let's see matthew the 24th chapter the lord says hey let's see if i can find it. yeah matthew 24 and 31 this is going to the second coming of our lord yahweh shah he says, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. So when you read Baruch 3 and 4, it says what, man? Hey, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, but where thou hast scattered us, all right, we've been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments. Are you not paying bills and shit according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from the Lord our power? Right, so we are currently in captivity today, and we're in ancient, not ancient, but modern-day Babylon, all right? Let's see what I want to get. Let's get Michael real quick. Michael, the fourth chapter, and all these damn nations are against the chosen people, man. All right, this is Mac. <clears throat> it's like, this is Michael 4 and 10. It says, be in pain and labor to bring forth Oh, daughter of Zion, all right? Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Pain is captivity, man. He says, and labor to bring forth. That's why he puts in his work. So the Lord, so we can, um, you know, nation Israel, who is married unto the Most High, can give birth unto the sons of the Most High. And to prove that, okay, we are married unto the Most High, let's go to Jeremiah 3 and um, 15. Matter of fact, 14 says, Turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord Yahweh, for I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. See? I will bring you to Zion. Fucking demon around here, man. Making all these noise and shit. Let's see. So let's go back to Michael 4. All right, Michael 4 and 10. <clears throat> Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. This is modern-day Babylon. There 
shalt thou be delivered. And there the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushah shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Now also many nations are gathered together against thee. They say, let her be defiled and let our eye look upon Zion, right? All these other nations are incensed against you, man. So-called Negro, Latino, and Native Americans. That's why when you go to Lamentations 2 and 15, it says, all that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag at the head, wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, is this a city that men call the perfection and beauty the whole, the joy of the whole earth? It says, all thine enemies have opened thy mouth against thee. They hear some nasty teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we look for. We have found. We have seen it. See? So that's why we need to be delivered. Because all these other nations have uh, orchestrated a plan, man. <laughs> a plan to cut us off from being a nation. That's what some of the Psalms say. Revelation 11 and 18. It says, in their dead bodies. This is talking about the dead, the spiritually dead Israelites, the ones that are still call themselves Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right? They're considered dead because they don't know who they are. They had their identity stripped away from them. So they're spiritually dead, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is America, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom and Egypt, that's self explanatory. But also, our Lord, Yahweh Shah, was crucified. Yeah, they gave you Jesus Christ. They gave you all these other philosophies and they X'd out the true Messiah. Alright? Of the Bible. <clears throat> it says, and they are the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies. These nations know who you are. That's why they said, let her be the foul. So see their dead bodies three days and a half. Alright? And that's mainly started, that mainly started in 1619 when the bulk of the, uh, the Israelites came over here to the Americas. All right, all the way up into uh, 1969 when Abba Bibbins, the spirit incident to him, as he's going to say, all right, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves, all right? The nation says, see their dead bodies three days and a half, 350 years, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves, meaning they're not, they weren't going to be comforted. The people are not going to tell us who we were, right? It says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets, the northern and the southern kingdom, all right, tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So they trying to get, they, they trying to get paid back, all right? They had to get paid back because we actually had these nations in subjection in the times past. So they returned the favor, all right? Verse 12, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. No matter of fact, I skipped one. Verse 11, and after three days and a half, all right, it's 350 years, all the way up into 1969 from 1619, the spirit of life, which is the understanding of this book, from the most high entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. A great and great fear fell upon them with Sodom because these elites have spent trillions of dollars, man, keeping us asleep, all right? They have spent so much money keeping us asleep now that we are waking back up. They know that it's through the spirit of the Most High that we have done it. And they understand that, hey, as we wake up and we call them the true names of Yahweh by Shem the Lord is going to begin to make a move. And it's going to come and deliver his elect, right? And that's the time that we're in. <clears throat> and verse 12 explains this. It says, And after that, they heard a, a great voice from heaven, that's Yahweh Shai, saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them, right? And they ascended up into a cloud. And their enemies beheld them. That's when we go up into those chariots and we'll see these people called so called UFOs. And then we're gonna be uh we're gonna be in, in a safe haven pretty much from um the destruction that's to come. And that's also reiterated in the book of Isaiah, the twenty sixth chapter. Alright. In twenty verse it says, Come my people into thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as if it were for a little moment until the indignation overpass and what is that indignation that's thermonuclear missiles touching down on america babylon the great all right so revelations 11 again going back up to we just read 12 let's go to 13 it says in the same hour when we were lifted up was a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and America is split up into ten FEMA zones. So a tenth part 
which is a complete part of the city fell. That's why America is going to be completely destroyed. And in the earthquake was slain of men 7,000. 7,000 just means completion. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the Most High of Heaven. All right? So that's going to be the deliverance of the nation of Israel. And um, <clears throat> we are currently prophesying against Babylon the Great. Okay? And as we just read about the destruction, this this pretty much goes into it, the destruction of America. Revelation 11, I mean 18 and 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues these missiles. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her according to her works in the cup which she have filled, filled to her double, how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no will, and shall see no sorrow. America has not been touched. America America has not been bombed. You know, no major threat has really happened to America. And it's about to happen on a major scale. That's, it's gonna be the worst destruction ever known in the history of mankind because the most high is going to make all these nations shoot their missiles at america and america is going to be that big lake of fire verse 8 <clears throat> therefore shall her plagues come in one day death mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the lord who judges her all right and when you go back to 17 let's go to revelation 17 real quick all right Verse 5 says, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. All right? Babylon means confusion, mixture. All right? You got a mixture of nations in Babylon. It says, The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That's why America's going to be judged the way that it's going to be judged. All right? And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, which are the Israelites. Read Psalms 55, or Psalms 50 and 5. All right? And with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh Shai. And when I saw her, I won of a great admiration. And this is John the Revelator saying a vision of America in the future, all right? And this is that great whore mentioned in the scripture. So what do you do with a whore, man, in the law, all right? You stone her and you and you burn her. So America's going to get both of those judgments. America's going to be burned, all right? First it's going to be stoned by these missiles, then it's going to be burned. So that's the, <laughs> the judgment of the great whore according to the law of the Most High, you see? So let's go back to Revelation 18 to close it out. After that destruction, <clears throat> verse 9, And the kings of the earth, all these nations, who have committed fornication, spiritual fornication, and live deliciously with her, shall beware her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, a great city Babylon, that mighty city, for one hour is thy judgment come. God damn. One hour. It's going to take for America to be destroyed. And all these other nations that have drunken and have gotten drunken with this, this whore, this bitch, they're going to sit there and they're going to be like, damn, I don't want to be like that. You know, you know, we, we don't want to feel that wrath. So America's going to be set as that example for these other nations of how not to be in this earth, man, how not to be rebellious against the Most High. And uh, America's going to be set as a gazing stock for these other nations to take notes. <laughs> And to know not to rebel against the Most High again, and uh, yeah, man, that's, that's pretty much uh, all I got. You know, we're in that time, all right, of deliverance. So with that, a hey, Lord willing, it was edifying. Till next time, I say, shalom.